Hey folks, what's up? Let's talk about Hello High Water. I have finally seen it. It's a film about two brothers with conflicting personalities who rob banks somewhere in a fictional place in Texas and the ranger and his partner who are pursuing them. That's it. The film stars Ben Foster as one of the brothers who quickly is quickly starting to become one of my favorite actors. He is a genuine scene stealer in everything I have seen him in until now. Like in Kill Your Darlings for example in which he plays the famous American writer William S. Burroughs abso fucking lutely just nailing the role. In, in Lone Survivor, oh my god, Ben Foster in Lone Survivor is just the shit. And even in Warcraft, in which he is terrible, <laughs> but everyone is terrible in that movie, every human character, but I think he, uh, his performance uh, is so like hammed up to the point where he is so bad, he actually, I think he becomes good. He actually becomes one of the more entertaining uh, of the human characters in Warcraft. I haven't seen Freeth and Yuma and The Messenger yet, but you can bet your ass that I'm more eager than ever to watch them now. Chris Pine plays the other brother. Now Chris Pine, I like him, okay, he's really good. But in everything I have seen him in, like everything from Star Trek to Z for Zechariah, which is actually in a pretty awesome movie, I should rewatch and review that, honestly, uh, he pales in comparison with his co-stars. And I think that's the same case here as well, which is a little bit of a shame, I would say, because he is undoubtedly meant to be the heart and soul of this film. He is undoubtedly the main character and it's it's a little strange because I kind of felt like this was the same situation like with The Revenant for example about which many people were of the opinion that uh, Leonardo DiCaprio and Tom Hardy's roles should have been switched between them and I completely agree with that because yeah let's face it DiCaprio is, is cool but Tom Hardy is undoubtedly the more versatile actor. I kind of felt like with Hell or High Water it was kind of the same situation like if, if we would have seen Chris Pine and Ben Foster like switching roles like Chris Pine be the douchebag and and Ben Foster be the like the heart and the soul and the protagonist of the film, I think we would have had a, a lot more interesting of a situation. And the movie also stars Jeff Bridges. Now, how should I even sum up my opinion about this actor? Let's just say that my, like, idea of a perfect heaven would be Jeff Bridges and Kurt Russell sitting at a table having beer, and I could if I could just sit with these two guys and just have a beer for all eternity, I would just be, I would just be like, I would, I would be fine. <laughs> now this film is considered to be a neo-western and to be honest that's kind of like a term I don't always fully understand how it applies to certain films which are considered to be neo-westerns. I mean I think just because a film takes place in a remote area in the countryside doesn't necessarily mean that it's a western. I think we definitely need to have some very specific character archetypes in the story for it to be able to be considered a, a western. But I think here in Hell or High Water like this, this absolutely fills the bill because we you basically have all of the elements. We have this kind of Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid type of vibe going on with these two main characters, the two brothers with opposing personalities who rob banks. We have a sheriff in the form of Jeff Bridges' character. We have the epic uh, showdown uh, at the end of the film or gunfight or whatever you call it. And even Native Americans. Yes, Jeff Bridges' partner is, I think, half Native American, uh, part Mexican even, I think he says during a certain point in the film. And Jeff Bridges does not hold back at all when it comes to teasing his partner about this fact. Uh, and I swear, like, some of the banter, most of the banter, all of the banter <laughs> between these two characters is just pure fucking comedic gold. I was not expecting to laugh during this film probably more times than I do during most comedies. But it's very endearing. I mean, of course, we quickly understand that Jeff Bridges is not really a racist. <laughs> Quite the contrary, in fact. I think it's not made perfectly clear, but I think it's pretty clear that these two, they are much more than just partners. In fact, I think they are best friends, basically. But, you know, Jeff Bridges is the type of friend, uh, maybe like some of you have in your lives, maybe even I have in my life, I really have to start thinking about this, that constantly makes fun of you, but deep down inside, maybe it's something he would never say out loud or verbalize, but deep down inside, he truly loves you. 
And that's the type of relationship these two have. And I thought it was it was somewhat more intriguing than the relationship between the brothers, which is also quite similar. I mean, I think the whole point of uh, having those two main characters and these two main characters and these both of these like narrative threads was to basically be this kind of mirror showing you that, okay, outlaws and men of the law but the two basically are not so different from each other. I am under the impression that many people consider this to be one of the best films of the year. And because of this, I think I was kind of expecting something not better necessarily, because this is a solid film, absolutely solid movie. I think I was just expecting something a little different, I think. I was expecting a more serious film. And it's not that the film doesn't take itself seriously most of the time. I mean, it starts off serious, it ends serious. But there are these comedic elements, which do work, like I said. But I also have a gripe with the film, I think, because of this. Because I guess I think that it's some, it's sometimes it struggles with finding a, the right tone or mixing tones. Uh, there is a, a scene in the beginning in which the brothers are talking about their mother, who just recently passed away. This is not a spoiler, they mention it like in, almost in the very beginning. And then we have the funny moments. And I thought that those moments when the film was really trying to stir up some emotions in you were just not working. They were just not working for me, honestly. I think it was more, a lot more effective uh, with the fun parts, with the fun elements of the film. The action, the banter, and all of that stuff. The chase, the suspense. Um, who knows, I might be the only one with this opinion. Just my opinion. So that's basically it, I guess. I mean, I apologize if this review is not as thorough or as long as some of my other reviews, not as well thought out. Uh, but this film is very simple. It's really, it didn't really leave me with anything to ponder about, honestly. But as an entertaining, well-written, well-crafted, well-put-together, well-acted film, this is pretty much top-notch and I definitely recommend it. So thanks for watching my review, as always I will see you later with other reviews, until then take care people and goodbye.